Turn into the economy. You remember last time I said, you know, I'm, uh, you know, as soon as Trump gets elected, everybody's perception of the economy is going to change. Everybody thinks the economy is fantastic. And, and that will be true of Republicans. And Democrats, who thought the economy was good, will now think the economy is bad. That is, people think the economy is good or the economy is bad based on the tribe that they belong to not based on the experiences that they're having in day-to-day life in the economy. And, you know, last time I got criticized because I, I, I was told, um, Iran, you're ignoring people's lived experience. Uh, no, I don't think I'm ignoring people's lived experience. And yeah, some people are worse off, but in general, kind of the numbers don't lie. And the numbers kind of however you slice them, the economy is done by the standards of modern economies, by the standards of today, by the standards of the last 40 years under Biden since 2020, uh, 2022, done pretty well. So here's a graph. Let's see if I can uh, show you this. Um, yeah, here's a graph. Uh, red is Republican, blue is Democrat. This is index of consumer sentiments. And you can see that during the first... Uh, Trump term, consumers were pretty happy. I mean, uh, Republicans were pretty happy with the economy, and Democrats were not so happy with the economy. Republicans' sentiment, consumer sentiment, they thought the economy was doing well, and Democrats didn't think the economy was doing well. Even when COVID happened, while the economy got worse for everybody, everybody's sentiment went down, Republican sentiment went down less than Democratic sentiment. And then... Biden gets elected, and it flips. Suddenly, Republicans think the economy is doing terrible, and suddenly Democrats think the economy is doing pretty well. And by the way, it's about to flip again, and it will flip in a big way. I'll I'll bring you the graph once we have data on the flip will happen. Democrats will suddenly perceive the economy. And this is consumer sentiment. This is their sentiment, personal sentiment, regarding the economy. Here is another graph. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, you can't see it all. Let me, let me adjust this graph so you can see it better. Um, let's see. Shrink it. Back in a view. I think that's, yeah, that's good enough. All right, this is um, share of public by party that rate the condition of the national economy as very or fairly good. So this is not the usual uh, consumer sentiment, but something different, but basically the same thing. Uh, surveys, do you think the economy is good or bad? Right? Obama years? Pff, Obama years? Democrats thought it was good. Republicans thought it was bad. Trump gets elected. Republicans think it's good. Democrats think it's bad. Right? Biden gets inaugurated. Democrats think it's good. Republicans think it's bad. Republicans had recovered completely after COVID. Look at that. I mean, there was a huge crash of of thinking the economy is bad now, and then suddenly massive recovery. And then as soon as Biden gets elected, bam, huge decline. And Republicans think the economy is goddamn awful, the worst it's ever been. And the Democrats think, oh, it's pretty good. It's 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 almost it's as good, uh, you know, as as it was uh, in the political part. Now it's true. The Democrats do, you know, it hasn't gone back to the level of Democrats uh, of where it was in the Obama years, uh, even for Democrats. But look at where Republicans are. But, I mean, this is so bizarre. It's like reality doesn't matter. Factual stuff doesn't matter. What, you know, what matters is who sent, who's president, and I can predict Basically, on average, whether, you know, if you're a Republican or Democrat, whether you think the economy is doing well or not. <laughs> uh, and it's not like a Republican president just gives goodies to Republicans and Democrat gives it goodies to Democrats. So that's why they feel it, because they, they really objectively are getting more. No, this is pure tribal political affiliation tribalism. That's all it is. And I said that the other day. Um, but I wanted to show you the graphs kind of to show it to you, 
right? Yeah, I mean, sentiment towards the economy is literally a feeling. And, and their view of whether the economy is doing well or badly is basically just a feeling because none of them actually look at the data. If you ask, by the way, and I don't have that graph here, but if you ask these same people, are you doing well? The people who think the economy is awful still say they're doing well. Right? So it's all about emotion, but it's all about a, a, a tribal, you know, they, they, they're saying what they're supposed to say, given the tribal perception, given what their particular media is telling them. You know, MSNBC, when, when Biden's president is saying the economy is doing great, Fox is saying the economy is doing bad, and they're just mouthing back th those. But it's not just mouthing back. It affects them. It affects their sentiment. It affects their emotion. It affects their views. It affects how they vote. It affects how they view the world. And, uh, you know, it really, really, really is not objective and not fact-based. Not fact-based. And we could argue about what economic indicators we should look at and how the economic indicators are measured and what's good and what's bad and how bad and how good they are, which reminds me of this uh, paper. Where is, let me just see if I can find this paper. Uh, um, yeah, I must have closed it. But there was a paper out that looks at various measures of inflation. And it basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the, we've talked about this inflation. I, I did a whole show on inflation, right? And in, in, in the show on inflation, I talked about this CPI and there's, there's other measures of inflation. And what's stunning about this paper that I just read, and I thought I had saved it and, uh, and was going to share it with you, Oh, yeah, here it is. It's called, it's a working paper by uh, Scott Winship from the American Enterprise Institute. Um, and it's called, uh, you know, introducing a new concept, which is a more accurate consumer price index. And basically what Scott shows is he summarizes, he explains what CPI is, he explains how CPI works, he explains the alternatives to CPI that have been used historically. There's something called CPIU, and then there's the Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, which is PCEPI. Uh, the CPIU is the price index for all urban consumers, which is Consumer Price Index for all urban consumers. And here's just, I'm just going to read you this one result from the study, which shows that how you measure inflation is going to give you completely different outcomes in terms of for example, if wages gone up, real wages, right? We always, you, we always talk about what's real, right, versus what's nominal, right? Wages might have gone up, but if they've gone up slower than inflation, then real wages have gone down. So real wages are relative to inflation. So here's, here, I'm just going to read you from the summary, uh, from the summary of this. Um, while the most widely cited inflation measure, the Consumer Price Index for All Urban Consumption, that's the one we hear all the time about, CPI suggests that the average hourly wage of production and non-supervisory workers rose by 2% from 1973 to 2003. Now, if that's true, that is very depressing. Again, the CPI suggests, if you use the CPI to, def to, to adjust wages across the entire period, what you find is that wages only went up 2%. That's stagnation. That's awful from the perspective of wage earners. However, he says, if you use the superior, economically superior, you know, personal consumption expenditure price index, it indicates a rise of 30% in earnings, which is much better than 2%. Maybe if people knew that their earnings in real terms had risen by 30%, they wouldn't be so depressed. But then he goes on to say, but using this new measure that's called more advanced, more accurate consumer price index, wages actually rose by 61.5%. <laughs> now, that's a factor of 30. One measure gives you 2, and one measure gives 61. 
if you just take the median wage of prime age male workers, if you use the CPI, it fell by 15%. If you use the PCEPI, it rose by 9%. And if you use the MACPI, the more accurate measure, it rose by 35%. I mean, so a lot of the, this, this, this people's perception of the economy is driven not just by uh, tribalism, it's also driven by the fact that we are constantly inundated with false economic data, with economic data that doesn't actually reflect the real state of the world. Inflation over the last 50 years has been significantly lower than what you have been led to believe. Inflation over the last 50 years has been significantly lower. And the reason for that has to do with the fact that they don't take into account imports, and imports have become a bigger and bigger part of the economy and therefore play a bigger, bigger role in, in, in consumer prices. It's the fact that they can't measure quality. They don't adjust for quality and on and on. I mean, we could do a whole show about this paper, and maybe I will, because I think it is interesting. But Scott Winsett is not some lefty uh, who doesn't care about inflation. He works on the American Enterprise Institute, which is a used to be considered the premier conservative think tank. It, it's out because it's not Trumpish. It's not MAGA. But uh, this is a, a, you know, the way in which we are taught about, or the way in which economic information is communicated to us is unbelievably distortive and unbelievably inaccurate. And as a consequence, we come to conclusions that are just false. Just false.